So, Sumit Ji, why do you wish to join the civil service? So, for me, civil services is a very prestigious and uh, respected job, and it is one job which gives me unlimited opportunities to serve, to do various jobs, and also during the process to discover my true potential. Right. So, what uh, qualities will you bring to this job? So, personality traits, character qualities. So, civil services, I will bring uh, the qualities of integrity, honesty, hard work, and uh, because of my work experience, I know how to work in a team and uh, commitment towards goals. Good, very good. So, is this your first attempt? No, sir, this is my fourth attempt. Fourth attempt? Okay. Up to Okay. So, Mr. Sumit, now in uh, Assad, under the direction of the Supreme Court, uh, the NRC is the updated National Institute. What is the objective of this exercise? Sir, the uh, National uh, Register for Citizens is being updated to identify uh, people who have come from Bangladesh to uh, clearly identify who are the illegal migrants. And based on that, we will take a decision to repatriate by the Right. Now, uh, what is the cutoff here which has been fixed for this? So, can I take a guess? I am not very sure. Yeah. It is uh, 1971. Yeah, 71. After Bangladesh was created uh, primarily. And yes, it will identify those who are the illegal immigrants and those who are the uh, illegal immigrants. And the Supreme Court had given the directives on this also. Right. Now in Assam, they also have a problem of insurgency. Which group is it uh, which is uh, still involved in this insurgency? Sir, so, Ulfa and Bodoland. Yeah, you are very correct. Ulfa. Now, Ulfa, what is the demand of the Ulfa? Sir, I don't understand. Right. What about the Bodos? Sir, uh, Bodoland, they want a separate autonomy type system. Demand for Bodoland territorial. Okay, they want the state. The territorial state is already there. The Bodos are tribals. And they want a state. So now, you know, there is this demand for statehood which keeps on coming up. Bodos are demanding a state. In Darjeeling, uh, uh, there they are the Gurkha and they are demanding Gurkha land. So do you think that it's a good idea to, uh, to give them statehood? Sir, this demand represents a certain deficit in our system. So, uh, just because they are demanding and we are giving state to every uh, demand, it is not going to solve the problem. And it will further create demands by various groups. And uh, if we look at the history of uh, how the uh, state's demands are being fulfilled and whether they are uh, delivering on those objectives or not. So, in my opinion, giving a state code is not going to solve the problem. Rather, we should focus on the developmental aspect and then taking everyone together. Okay. Right. Now, the other issue which I'd like to ask you something about is that, uh, are you aware of what is the AFSPA? Yes, sir. AFSPA is, uh, is uh, there in certain parts of Northeast yes, and also in the valley, in Jammu and Kashmir. So, what power does this AFSPA give to the armed forces person? APSPA has been designed as a reassurance mechanism to our security forces who are working in extremely disturbed areas. So, uh, under this APSPA provision, our security forces have been given certain immunity from prosecution so that they can carry their work fearlessly and easily. Okay. Now, uh, the Supreme Court has uh, been looking into some cases of alleged false encounters in Manipur on the basis of a PIA. Yes, and the Supreme Court had given certain directions on this. Are you aware of this? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me something about that. Sir, uh, Supreme Court has uh, looked into the allegations where it has been said that uh, uh, armed forces have misused the power given under AFSAPA and it has said that it cannot be tolerated. Those uh, incidents where the powers have been misused, they should be properly investigated and actions should be taken. But it did not recommend that AFSPA should be abolished, anything like that. No, that did not. And uh, 
whom have they asked, uh, who should investigate these cases? Are you aware of that? CBI. They've, they've asked the CBI to look into this matter. Okay. Now, you know, the Canadian Prime Minister was in India. And when he left, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, some bad blood was created. When he went back to Canada, there's some uh, reaction to that. What was this all about? Sir, the issue generated uh, the way uh, Canadian Prime Minister was received in our uh, country. So, a section of media has speculated that he has not received the kind of uh, treatment. Uh, but tell me, uh, when he left, a joint declaration was signed between the Prime Minister of India and the Prime Minister of Canada. What was that? So, it's not a matter of Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sumit, public administration is your office now. Please tell me, what is the difference in the role of a manager and that of an administrator? Sir, a manager works at an operating level. Hmm. Uh, his responsibility is to achieve certain objectives that have been decided by an administrator. Now, administrator, we can decide, uh, define in terms of that has been decided by the administrator. Manager is, I am mostly referring to the public sector, right? those who are private sector. And administration is almost the public sector. Okay? Like civil service, so you get top administrative posts. Okay? Now, okay. So that, that's what sir, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Administrator, this concept can be used in private sector as well as in public sector. For example, a district collector can be called an administrator, mm. but he has to also perform role of manager these days because there are uh, resource crunches and resources. Okay. So, but so even there is no difference. No, there is difference, right? right? In private sector, if I have to talk about an administrator of a company, so he is working at a very top level, and he. My basic question is, I have given you the context also, manager of a private sector, administrator of a public sector. What is the role difference? So in that context, an administrator of a public sector is overall responsible for the general supervision and ensuring that particular policy is being implemented. For example, a district collector has certain obligations, certain obligations, yes. obligations that the government political executive makes policies and the executive. Think over, think over. You have not been able to give a satisfactory answer for this. Okay. You are in Cairn India, no? Yes, sir. What is the role of Cairn India? What is the kind of job they do? So, my role? No, Cairn India. Cairn India is a petroleum sector exploration and production company. It is working in upstream sector, that is production of crude oil. Production of crude oil. Does it uh, involve itself in any exploration in, inside India? Yes, sir. It has done exploration in Rajasthan field. Mm. It has also done exploration in uh, certain coastal fields like uh, Capway Basin in the western coast and the Krishna Godari Basin. Name some of the biggest refineries in India. Sir, uh, Jamnagar refinery of Reliance is mm. one of those. The, does that also do domestic supply? Yes, sir. Jamnagar refinery does receive uh, food production from within country. So, mm. I'm not sure about their external supply from this country. Let me see that if you know. The Jamnagar refinery of Reliance is an ECJ. It imports the crude and exports the refined product. Okay. Mm. You should know in petroleum sector, all the things. Okay. You have given second preference to IRS IT after IAS. And then you know where back. But one of them much after IFS. Anyway, your preference is for income tax. Are you reading the newspaper regularly? Yes. Tell me, what is the total revenue collection in direct tax? Mm -hmm. Compared to last year, they have given in newspapers there is report. Sorry, I cannot recall right now. That means last three months, three reports are coming. End of December, end of January, end of February. What is the collection? So, there is increase or decrease? There is certainly increase, sir. So, 
Okay. And uh, economic survey also said that after the demonetization and mm -hmm. GST, both the direct taxes and indirect taxes have increased. No, but uh, you don't know the figures. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, twenty percent increase in February and compared to previous year. Read the newspapers. Okay. You know about Udan scheme? Yes, sir. What is the scheme? It is called Pure Deska Aam Nagrik. It is a government of India's project to connect remote areas and provide air connectivity to those areas. Mm. So, so what is the, you know, earlier also there were air connectivity, so now they will connect to some more areas. So tell me something more about this scheme. Uh, sir, under this scheme, uh, low cost airports will be uh, set up. Low cost airports? I mean, they will not have the facilities like uh, international airports are having. Absolutely, because in a small area like uh, Jalandhar, you or maybe uh, some other Darbhaka, you will not have a big airport. But it is required for the people of the, this thing. But what is the main provision of this scheme, Udan scheme? How they have made it more affordable? Ure Deska Aam Nagri, so it is more affordable. Government has fixed a cap of uh, 2500 rupees for one hour flight. How, you know, there is a, the airlines who will fly, they will require money. So the, how the gap is to be made? So I am not exactly. There is something called viability gap funding. Okay. You have heard about that? Yes, I know about it. Uh, you are not aware of that. Okay. Have you read something about Uda International? No, sir. Again, which has come out in this way. Okay, You uh, write poems? Yes, ma'am. In English or Hindi? In both languages. If I asked you to recite four lines of a poem that you've written, will you be able to do it? Yes, ma'am. Let's hear. Twenty-four lines. Okay. So, uh, this poem I wrote when I was going through a bad day just to motivate myself okay. to write on this poem. So, it is called uh, पथिक हूँ मैं दिख भ्रमित नहीं, so it goes like that. पथिक हूँ मैं दिख भ्रमित नहीं, छड़ी अवकाश में हूँ, अस्थाई विराम में नहीं। ये जो चंद लम्हे मैं रोया, इसे मेरा अंत ना समझ, उठूँगा मैं, चलूँगा मैं, और दौड़ करिए छड़ी तम कुछ भी नहीं। So we hope दौड़ के आप इस को पास भी कर लिया अपने इंटरव्यू को, uh, assisted them in uh, studies. What did you do in this? What class were these children from? So these were, uh, ma'am, uh, these were children uh, living just behind our. No, but what classes were they from? So these were from primary, nursery to six, seven, eight. Okay. All it was mixed up. All right, all right. Now also you've given your card of reference as UP, but you were born in Bihar. You studied in Jharkhand. So are you aware of the problems that the children faces? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Tell me something then about UP. Uh, why do we see so much of communalism? So many communal rights, protests. Why is that so? Ma'am, this has multiple reasons for that. First is the historical reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier we used to have communal harmony, but uh, when the English British came, mm -hmm. they followed this divide and rule policy. There was a uh, Ganga, Yamuna, harmony in UP, but that got uh, disrupted in the historical times. Apart from that, even today if you look at the social structure, that social structure and economic structure is overlapping. For example, the landlord, the land ownership is if we see. So there is also going to be a class because the landlords are having Hindu background, but the workers, they are working, they are so having. So why do we see these communal rights now? Never uh, mind the history. Uh, these factors are there, but at the same time, at certain level, uh, there are lapses in law and order management also. So what should be done to improve this trust between the two communities? Ma'am, improving the trust between the communities is a long term process. Okay. Uh, so on the long front, we have to create this harmony for that our civil society, our family, as well as the political activities all have to continue. But as a short term measure, the administrator has to be very stringent with uh, these uh, lapses and has to be okay. Now we hear of all these loan waivers in UP for the farmers. Do you think this was a good policy? 
Ma'am, this remote never was done as an immediate uh, respite mechanism. But now every every state is asking for a road waiver for its farmers, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. Ma'am, my opinion on uh, road waiver is that it should only be seen as an immediate respite and not as a long term solution. Mm -hmm. If I can talk about Uttar Pradesh, uh, it had for last two to three years its agricultural growth rate is very negative. So it had uh, agrarian distress situation. So just to help farmers, this decision was taken. But yes, of course, it cannot be a long term solution. So what can be done to improve the lives of farmers? Suggest some steps, one, two, three, four, any? Well, first would be uh, to imp uh, provide them better remunerative prices for their produce. But before they start producing, you need water, you need electricity. That's what Irrigation facilities, electricity only, then they will be able to produce good crops, good, uh, give them good seeds, good fertilizers. That's why we have to be a very holistic approach. Our government is also focusing on doubling the farmer's income. So this comprises all these factors, reducing the input cost and providing... Do you think it's very really possible to double the farmer's income? Yes, ma'am. There are certain uh, uh, challenges, but we have to look at the alternate with like... Uh, uh, like uh, supplementing their income through alternate means like uh, agriculture, uh, livestock, farming and... But now beef is banned, so what livestock? Livestock, we have goat, we have poultry, we have aquaculture, so these we can look into. Alright. Now tell me what are some of the internal security problems which our country faces? One is communalism which we discussed. Anything else? Uh, second is nationalism problem. Okay. Insurgency both in North East in and uh, militancy in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Terrorism, money laundering, all these are problems. Okay. So tell me something about the LWE which you just mentioned. Which are the states which are affected by it? Ma'am, uh, major states affecting from left giving extremisms are uh, Jharkhand, mm -hmm. Odisha, mm -hmm. uh, Chhattisgarh. Yes. Andhra Pradesh. Not so much, uh, but anyway. And few states of Maharashtra also. A few districts of Maharashtra. Uh, and? That's it. Telangana? Not to Yes, it is. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Again, yes, sir. In 2016, the government came out with uh, insurgency and bankruptcy court. Yes, sir. Must be a. Uh, what is the significance of this court? Why is it quite modern? Sir, insolvency and bankruptcy court provides a mechanism where those companies or those firms who have got uh, uh, bankrupt, they can easily liquidate it. So it is a mechanism to liquidate it, uh, it easy exit. Uh, so they resolve the crisis happening in corporate sector. Or Subsequently, there were certain amendments to the code also, to the original law. They implemented some give rise to certain problems. Sir, I'm not aware of it. You are not aware of it. Recently, there were some policy changes about the coal sector. Yes, sir. Are you aware of that? Yes. What kind of changes were made? Sir, recently, the coal sector has been being nationalized, so now commercial mining can take place. Are you sure? You said uh, de-nationalized, but it was open to private uh, idea. But sir, it was open in different format. It was like captive mining projects were there. Yes. But now it is open for commercial mining as well can take this. What is the implication of that? Sir, we will be able to increase our domestic coal production. Currently, uh, our coal production is around <coughs> 650 million tons, but country demand is around 900 million tons. So we can vote around 250 million tons. So that aspect we can look at. Also, Coal India Limited, uh, uh, see, Coal India Limited, so competitiveness can be increased so far it has been acting as a monopoly. So that aspect can also be looked It might affect the price also, price of coal? I'm not very aware of it. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, you have done your petroleum engineering, right? Yes, sir. Tell us something about the petroleum sector. Particularly, how important is oil? Security for a country like India. 
So for India, energy security is a very important thing because it affects us at different levels. It affects our uh, foreign policy relations. How much of oil we are producing domestically? Sir, we are producing around uh, 800,000 barrels per day. In percent as well, which is about we, we produce about 30 percent of our total domestic uh, demand for oil. Hmm. 80 percent we import from other countries. Is there any move to raise it from this to 30 percent? Yes, sir. Government has taken many steps for that. It has given a new hydrocarbon exploration licensing policy. It has also changed the production sharing contract. What are the proven resources? Reserves of petroleum in the country. Major proven reserves are uh, like uh, Mumbai offshore, Bombay offshore, and uh, in Gujarat there are many fields. But so that may not be may not suffice to meet our domestic demand, right? Correct. Sir. So what kind of strategy are we following? So the first is that government has come up with a discovered small field policy where those small fields reach have been earlier operated by OAGC or Oil India Limited, they have now been given to, uh, they have now given to private sector so that they can work in their improved production. Apart from that, under the health policy and open aggregate licensing policy, we are inviting uh, foreign investors to come into India and discover the most things which are Recently, not there were certain diplomatic initiatives also to acquire more oil reserves. Are you aware of that? Prime Minister visited the Middle East. Any important development taking taking place during that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have foreign assets also in oil and sector. In Israel, we are trying to get uh, uh, share in their uh, offshore gas field. We have Tapi gas pipeline also. So these projects are also on board. Now, mergers and acquisitions. How important are they? So merger and acquisitions keep particularly in sector to APO. So recently uh, ONGC has acquired uh, HPCL Limited. So keeping the your company is also involved in merger. A merger is just taken over by current sir. Right. Correct. So what are the things, what are the implications of mergers? So the, uh, the uh, implications different from who is acquiring which company. Right. For example, Vedanta acquired K in India. So it made Vedanta a uh, company dealing in multiple natural resources. So it is uh, going to help Vedanta in diversified resources. Uh, for a company like ONGC, the acquisition of HPCL make it an integrated and a big PSU and it can compete with uh, many uh, global oil companies. So it would increase its uh, there is a potential danger involved in uh, this kind of mergers. What is that? Sir, one can be the monopoly. For example, the, it might result in monopoly. And uh, as a result, the customer may not get the benefit of the merger. But right. sir, I would like to completely disagree with this particular OMGC and the HPCL acquisition. Because these two companies are dealing in with a different sector. When they say deals with up yeah, yeah, okay. so, so it will not create company. Mine is a general statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is in the same Okay. Thank you. What is the GDP growth rate of Bihar? You are from Bihar? Yes, sir. Yes. So I don't know the exact figure, I don't have this figure. It is ten plus. What is the human development index among Indian states? Where does it stand? I'm not aware of the exact position. Have you heard of a hunger index which was brought out about two months back? Global hunger index. Where does India stand there? There was a in human development index among among the nations of the world. What is India's position? Can I take a guess? It was a 195th. 190. It was in 190s. So. 131. Criminalization of politics. What do you understand by it? So it means that uh, money power and criminal power, criminals are coming to the politics. Nearly coming to the uh, 
uh, politics is, is makes it criminal. So it actually has two aspects coming from the politics and now politics uh, preventing and supporting the criminals who are outside the politics. So it has both. So what has the Supreme Court done to curb this mischief? Name some important judgments and rulings. Sir, uh, <coughs> Supreme Court gave one judgment in which it said that the convicted uh, political executive should be barred from taking. What was the judgment and when? It was called Dilip Thomas case. It happened in 2008. 2013. Okay. Left wing extremism. How many districts in Bihar are affected? Sir, two to three. Hmm? Two to three. Only. Recently, Prime Minister has announced rapid development of 150 most backward districts. What are the parameters on which these have been selected and how many of Bihar? figure in this list of no idea. Our constitution is rigid or flexible. Answer your question with the help of constitutional provisions. In certain cases it is rigid, but in certain cases you know, flexibility has been provided. You have the constitutional provision. For example, Article 368 provision is there which talks about the amendment. So, so it, is amend amend it can be amended. But there is also a basic structure doctrine which says that certain principles cannot be amended. So in that matter it is rigid. Very good, correct. Now our it is said that our polity is federal with, with a very strong unitary bias. Do you accept that position? Sir, I do not completely agree with that. Okay, what do you have to say? Because today we are also moving towards a cooperative federalism. So states also have enough uh, provision to exercise their policy making and decide their own path. So, will they uh, override the constitution? No, sir, the constitution itself provides enough uh, space for these states to function. Article uh, 246 talks about three subjects. So states have their own state subject list. Okay. Vietnam president was here last week. How many agreements were made and name one or two most important agreements? Sir. Iran president was here about 20 days back. What important agreements were made with him? Sir, with respect to uh, Iran president, we made an agreement where we decided to move forward on Pajab gas uh, deal with India. Okay. But that was not the most important. Most important was something else? Uh, this was with respect to a port we are developing in Iran. What, what was the agreement on Chamar? Uh, Iran gave, uh, it was regarding the uh, using of section of the port for the Indian purposes. Hmm? For our own purpose like... Uh, no, Vedanta who got involved in a case called Niyamgiri. Yes, sir. What was that case and what was Supreme Court decision? It was a case where Vedanta was involved in bauxite mining in the Amgri Hills and uh, Supreme Court decision was that we have to respect the rights of forest, traditional forest dwellers and Tongaria poor people living there. So ultimately the... So where do these, uh, these rights reside in the constitution? So these have actually been given under Forest Rights Act. No. Article 29 of the Constitution. How many uh, countries we are prospecting for oil and gas abroad? I know the names of few countries. But no, I am not asking. I also know. I probably I know more than you. But I wonder, you are you are working in the sector. That will you give me the whole picture. I don't know the exact number. How many sites? 38 sites, 17 countries. Bank frauds have taken place. And also people have run away with Indian money. Huh? Two very important initiatives have been taken in the last one week by government. Identify those initiatives. So first if we have uh, come up with the economic, uh, economic offenders bill. What economic offenders bill? What is the full name? So something related with fugitive, uh, fugitive offenders bill. 
fugitive economic of addressability. Right. That is the what else? Some not aware. Are you not aware? Are you are you aware of NFRA? NFRA. Right. You read. Triple Talaq. What principle was established by the Supreme Court? What constitutional principle? Sure. Not a what? Par gender parity? Article 15 of the Constitution? Alright, we close the matter. Now I'll give you a little feedback. So, Mithi, by love you have done better. We have put you under a lot of pressure, but you have been able to withstand. You have been able to handle the number of questions. My suggestion to you is that you have some time, 22nd of March, you still have about 10 to 15 12 days. You take a look at your prior data. On this, most questioning will take place. Bihar is the first. GDP growth, human development. Human development is not. Number two from the bottom. Worst is UP, then comes your state, then comes rest. So, take a look. Then there are other things like liquor ban, etc. etc. Second is they can ask you questions about Kosi. Kosi is a Bihar sorrow, they call it. So all these things. Then public administration is a second on which I have asked you a number of questions personally. Like criminalization, etc. etc. Third is oil sector is your area. So on this study a lot. These are the three. Fourth is current affairs. Now current affairs you were asked about Quran. I asked you about 150 districts. I asked you about Vietnam, Iran president. You were asked about merger. How does it help or not? Insolvency code, internal security problems, loan waiver in UP. Then we asked you about Bodo's, Ulfa, which are all insurgency things, Canadian prime minister. So these are the current affairs. So I would suggest that these are some of the areas where you should do. Fourth is this petroleum engineering. They can ask you what is the this petroleum engineering? Uh, what are the advances in this field? Mm -hmm. What is this fracking? They call it. You know, yeah. uh, and America is now suddenly becoming uh, oil uh, surplus. It has already started ex exporting oil. So where is America's supply coming up? Why can't we do this, imitate this, do the same in India? Now, some of these such questions which relate to your field. So, I am sure you will be able to handle the interview very nicely. By and large, you are doing well, your personality is good, your voice, everything is nice. Okay? Good luck. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.